Hi guys, it's Katie from Homo Libriensis. Thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks for coming back. Um, so, I've had a few comments from people who would like book recommendations and reviews for books about brain. So I had a, a bit of difficulty dividing these up because I've read, I read a lot of medical nonfiction. Um, and then I try to read specifically about brains when I can. So I've tried to go for specifically brains, but I will do, I'll try to do another video about medical nonfiction and um, language. And yeah, I'll try to make this, I guess, a bit of a series. I read a lot of nonfiction, or I usually read a lot of nonfiction, so I can come, kind of give recommendations about different areas of that. So this isn't exactly a top five. These aren't necessarily my favorites in any order, but they're ones I have enjoyed and some of them are more common and some of them are, you know, it's less likely that you've heard of them. So I'll go over the ones that are kind of more heard of first. So the first one and probably one of my favorites, and this kind of fits under memoir and brains and medical nonfiction, um, but primarily it's about someone's brain and that's Brain on Fire by Susanna Callan or Cahalan. And it is a memoir by a woman who, in her 20s, was a journalist, and she suddenly started to develop signs of mental illness and then psychosis, and was admitted to hospital after having, you know, um, catatonia and seizures. And she ended up being diagnosed with this sort of, this was back in, I think, 2009, so at the time she was diagnosed with this sort of mystery illness. Um, I don't want to give away exactly what it is, but it's something that's become a lot more common. Um, I don't think the disease itself has become more common, but the awareness around it has become more common. And the scary thing is that a lot of young people, and often usually young women, um, who previously would have been diagnosed with a psychotic illness or a psychiatric illness, actually may have had a physiological reason that could be treated with different kinds of medicines and interventions. Um, and may have passed away without the appropriate intervention. So this is something that's now changing and being identified a lot more, but excellent book. She just, she goes through so much and the fact that they even figured it out is amazing because she, you know, this was sort of cutting edge medicine at the time. So wonderfully written, beautiful story. I've read it at least three times, maybe four. The next one that's, I think, a little more well known, but I've read it a few times now is... The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Doidge, or Dr. Norman Doidge. And this is basically a layman's term book about neuroplasticity and the way that, the things that we're learning about neuroplasticity, basically the way that the brain can change through activity and repetition um, and that we're, it, the brain is not as sort of static and unable to change as we used to think it was. Now, the, this book is probably eight years old now, maybe, something like that. Um, so the medicine maybe isn't the most cutting edge, but it's primarily instructive on based on case studies. So the case studies about a woman who was born with learning disabilities and overcame them by just developing these sort of exercises that she took herself through repeatedly. Um, someone with a stroke who overcame those issues by, you know, taking the principles of neuroplasticity and kind of taking them to the extreme. So they are case studies. There are some studies that are have more evidence behind them, but overall it's well laid out. The stories are fascinating. Um, and it's very hopeful. It's hopeful about the idea that maybe there is something, like we're learning that the brain can do more than we think. One caveat to that is, this is his first book, The Brain That Changes Itself. So he wrote a second book called The Brain's Way of Healing, and I less so recommend that one. It's still hopeful. Um, it's still primarily case studies, but it starts to get a little bit further outside of the realm of actual science, or at least science with controlled studies a little bit more into the area of um, speculation, it seems. And he even near the end of the book kind of makes a few comments that are 
sort of anti-vax and that really put me off kind of the whole book itself because it's I don't think that that's based on scientific evidence so it makes me question the whole book um, but I will say that the, his first book, The Brain That Changes Itself, is excellent. I've read it multiple times. I would potentially steer clear of his second one, The Brain's Way of Healing, or at least go into it knowing, like, with that caveat that it's maybe a little bit, has some question. it's a little bit problematic. Um, okay, another book that goes around a lot when we're talking about brains is basically anything by Oliver Sacks, but The Man Who Mistook His Wife a hat is probably his most well-known his most classic and I think in my opinion his best book if you have a specific interest in music or um, visual processing then you're gonna want to pick one of his other books like musicology or I can't think of the name he has one about hallucinations and visual processing um, but this one is sort of his classic it's case studies of people with different neurological conditions and this was written a long time ago in, the, in 1970. So some of these things are probably things now that we know a lot more about um, and that aren't nearly as shocking, but the, they're each very short and just fascinating. But yeah, not his most recent work by any means, um, but a good sort of, if you just, if you don't mind reading, if you really like reading about brains and case studies and different things that can go wrong with the brain, then this is a good one. And then the other two books that are more, have been published more recently, and I haven't really heard anyone talk about, are, the first one is Into the Grey Zone by Adrian Owen. And this book came out just a few years ago, maybe just last year, and he is a researcher in Ontario, Canada, and he runs a lab where, well, Okay, it's called Into the Gray Zone. Basically, it's the idea of kind of trying to crack the code of both the gray matter and... So he's referring to the gray matter of the brain and also this sort of gray zone of how we don't know... We don't yet know what's going on in the minds of people who are considered in a vegetative state. And so he, through his research, he sets out to find out, are, these, are people considered in a vegetative state? Is that accurate or is there a way to reach them? And he starts doing all of these studies with functional MRI and actually does discover um, ways that he can, in some cases, make contact with these people who are considered in a vegetative state. So what that means is they have no reliable way of controlling any function of their body, be it eye movement or speech or making sounds or moving a hand or foot they have no reliable way of indicating that they comprehend the world around them and that they can respond and so he takes them into these these imaging machines and he asks them to do different mental tasks and in some cases has determined that even though someone may appear to be in a vegetative state actually has relatively intact cognitive function so truly a case of locked in syndrome so that it's just fascinating it's, he tells it, it you know it's written in a way that anyone can understand um so it's into the gray zone by adrian owen and it is fantastic and some of the most cutting edge um current research in that area um so it's it's both hopeful and disheartening but i'll let you be the judge of that and um the last one is more medical, um, but I included it because it's quite recent and it's a different take on the same thing. So the first book, uh, the other book, Into the Gray Zone, is sort of this medical piece behind it, um, or the research piece behind people in a vegetative state or one kind of level above um, minimally conscious would be the next level of sometimes showing signs of consciousness. And the, this book is called Beyond the High Blue Air by Lou Spinney, and it came out a few years ago, and it's written by a woman, she's not in the medical field, but her son experienced uh, a traumatic brain injury while he was skiing, and he did physically survive that injury, 
but this is the process of them, of sort of them finding out that this happened to him, of the initial shock, of them going, them being his, fa he and his family, um, figuring out, and then seeing how, you know, how much rehab can do for him and w and s just the wait and see process of what happens after a brain injury. And that one is not easy to read. It's not, you know, it's not going to be, I'm going to say one of those back from the dead kind of books where someone makes a, an incredible miraculous recovery and they come back to, you know, go back to doing everything that they used to do. But her side of the story of what this looks like from, you know, basically I like books like this because it shows us what modern medicine cannot do and what we often, what we're often doing to people. Uh, I work in, I'm not a neurologist, but I work in neurology. I work with people who have lost the ability to communicate or some of the ability to communicate after a neurological incident and yeah, it's it's a kind of a heartbreaking story of where what happens when modern medicine cannot can save a body but cannot save a mind and we're doing a lot of that lately. Um and what that really means and how we often don't really talk about what someone would want in that scenario and what we were willing I don't know, to put them through um in hopes of a better outcome or a good outcome. So those are kind of the five books I'm going to recommend right now. Like I said, the other videos I'd like to make are just sort of more medical nonfiction, even specifically sort of history of medicine and books surrounding language, but I want to make sure that I have some good recommendations for you. I know there are some other popular books out there, so if you have questions about them or if you want, I can put together another video. Um, if you've read something that you really loved about brains and you didn't see it on this list, please um, shoot me a recommendation because I'm always looking for more things to read about brains. So thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you guys next time.